Okay, so welcome back to Decrypted Tech. In our continuing coverage of ASUS's Z97i uh, Plus motherboard, we're gonna take a look at the uh, BIOS that's here. Right now we have it in advanced mode, so we'll go ahead and back out and get us into easy mode. This is what you see it, when you first kick on the system, you're gonna see this easy mode here. It's gonna show you pretty much everything you need to know. You have your easy tuning wizard if you really wanna do that, create storage, boost system performance. You have your date and time, you can change that here. You select your language. Basic information, CPU voltage, current motherboard temperature, your easy tunings over here, boot priority, you can just drag these around. You have your boot menu. You can turn on or off Intel rapid storage technology. It shows you what XMP is going on. You click that and turn it on very quickly. And then of course you have your different fans that are showing up here. Our CPU fan is of course our pump. So that's why we have the manual fan tuned down here. At the bottom of the screen you have your defaults, save and exit, or you can uh, go ahead and get into advanced mode. Advanced mode is also reached by hitting F7. So go ahead and hit F7, here you go. So now we're seeing the main screen. This is gonna show you, again, a lot of information. You have your BIOS uh, version, the uh, um, uh, version date, the build date, the ME version, P PCH stepping, and all the other information, CPU information, your language, system date, system time, access level, and all of that. You can also set up a favorites here, which right now we don't have any attached to this. So we'll go back. My favorites when you want to do that, you can also click F3 to get there. If you want to go quickly to fan controls, you can click F6 or just click on the link up there. And of course you hit escape to go back. You also have your easy tuning wizard, quick notes, which you can make notes on the BIOS and you can also set up hotkeys. And right, we'll move on to uh, the AI tweaker. Uh, one other thing we'll cover here. On the side you have the hardware monitor. It's gonna show you basic system information, CPU frequency, temperature, uh, B clock, V core, the ratio, all of that shows up here. Now, interestingly enough, it's not really reading correctly um, because our uh, target, well, actually, our target turbo mode frequency is 4.8 uh, 4, 4 gigahertz. So, when you go to AI Tweaker, you're going to see your information here. It's going to show you your turbo frequency, your cache frequency, DRAM, uh, your DMI, and the, gra uh, the GPU frequency. It's all going to be up here in yellow, so it's, it stands out easily. And then of course you have all of your different settings, your CPU strap, uh, filter PLL, B clock frequency, how you wanna do your multi-core enhancement, auto on dis or disabled. Uh, you also have your core ratio. Do you wanna sync all cores or do you wanna do everything per core? We chose to sync all cores for our overclock. Just enter 48 once and then you're off and running. Uh, you can set your CPU minimum and maximum cache ratios right here. Those are manual entry. Internal PLL over voltage is either auto, enabled, or disabled. B clock frequency to DRAM frequency ratio, you can set that up here. Um, again, that's a drop down 100 to 133, 100 to 100. So then your DRAM frequency, you can set that up here. You know, a lot of this is pretty simple if you've ever done overclocking. Your EPU power saving mode right now is disabled because we are overclocking. These are individual links. So as you click on these, it's going to take you to those different settings. This is your DRAM timing. As you can see, DRAM timing has gone from uh, a couple of different options, your basic options, to you can pretty much fine tune this down to almost every level of your memory. Uh, external Digi, power con Digi Plus power control, again, it's gonna go through here. You can do your uh, load, uh, CPU load line calibration, CPU VRM switching. All of this is uh, stuff that we saw in the AI suite as well. So it's, it's available here, but you have some of this also available in Windows if you don't wanna deal in the BIOS. So then you have your internal CPU power management. You can enable the speed step, turn uh, turbo mode on and off, all the other stuff, frequency tuning mode. You have a lot of options. A lot of these are options that we're used to seeing in the ROG line. Uh, ASUS has made a commitment that as they build these features and, and validate them at the ROG level, they are going to filter down into their other boards. You see this small form factor board with a lot of the options that you're used to seeing in a uh, you know, Republic of Gamers board. So it's a lot of great features. You can get a really good overclock out of this. Again, we have our uh, 4770 running at 4.8 gigahertz without any issues. Um, you know, we have manual mode 3.5. It's actually running at 3.48. CPU cache voltage. We set this to adaptive mode. Uh, just to see what we get out of it. And we actually did get a little bit more stability out of it. We had some original crashing issues at 3.5. We didn't want to push the voltage any higher. So we set up adaptive mode for the cache voltage and it calmed things right down. Uh, graphics voltage, you can adjust that. You know, all of the things that you really need to. DRAM voltage, we have set to 1.55. 
And then of course you down here you have spread spectrum which we have turned off for our overclock. Next up on the list, you have our the advanced options. CPU configuration. This is gonna, you know, the uh, adaptive thermal monitor, hyper threading, a lot of the options about the individual uh, CPU hardware prefetcher, the Intel virtualization technology, which is disabled by default. Hyper threading, you want it on or off. Dynamic storage acceleration, you want to put that in there. Boost performance mode, max non turbo performance. You can do max battery turbo performance. You can actually set this up directly in the BIOS. And of course, CPU power management configuration takes you right there. We've already talked about this the C states, turbo mode, all of that's available on this screen. Again, PCH. Um, the rapid storage, Intel Smart Connect, those are options here. The storage configuration, you can go here. AHCI is going to be pretty much your default. If you do need to, you can set it up for IDE. Uh, RAID is exactly what it says. It sets up RAID. You can turn Smart Status Check on or off just with a click of the button. Aggressive LPM support. Uh, leak power management support for better energy saving. Um, the hot plug. Uh, for the SATA is going to be disabled, so when this is off, you know, it's it's just sort of normal SATA. It allows you to do your hot plug, everything like that. Now, another nice thing here is you can actually name these. Right in the BIOS, just click on the actual SATA port that you want, call it whatever you want. So that way when you come in here and you look in the BIOS, you know exactly what it is. So if I wanted to call this boot drive, I could name it boot drive. And of course, it just covers it for all of the other options there. And then of course you have your M2, can name that we don't have anything plugged in so it's not going to give us any options for it all right so let's go back up we'll kick back out of here we'll take a look at system agent configuration cpu display audio you know very uh, very basic settings it's it's all of this is self-explanatory multi-monitor support so that allow you to run multi-monitors off of the the intel cpu dmi configuration gen 2 is enabled PCIe link, link speed, so we can go in here and, and Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, and then of course your memory configuration, memory scramble, scrambler, memory remap, so uh, enable support high frequency DRAM, so if we wanted to run 2133, this should give us better performance on this processor, let's, okay, come on, back, and back, USB configuration, same thing, XHCI, Smart Auto, e HCI handoff. We have that turned off. Doesn't need to be on with Windows anyway. So go ahead and head back. Platform miscellaneous controls, PCI native, PCIe native power management, DMI link. Again, pretty self-explanatory items in here. Onboard devices. Here's where you can get into the detail. You can turn your wireless controller on or off click of the button, Bluetooth, the same thing. Let's say you don't want to run these, uh, or you want to run wireless, but you don't want Bluetooth kicking on. You can turn it on or off here. Very simple. What I find interesting is when uh, I first got into working with computers, 99% of this stuff was jumpers on the board. You didn't have these options in the BIOS. You went in the BIOS to uh, set up basic configurations, the date and time, uh, which, you know, were you going to use a floppy? Did you want the keyboard to allow you to continue? Did you want NumLock to come on at boot? Those were your basic settings. You didn't have a lot of this, so it's nice to see these finally here. The BIOS has gone from being what it's named for, basic input-output system, to really sort of an OS that runs everything, and that's where Intel has moved this with the UEFI BIOS. You have a lot more control and a lot more power to run and tweak a lot of these settings that were not available before. Network stack configuration, uh, again, enable or disable UEFI network stack. For the most part, you're not going to use that, not going to need it, so just leave it at default. Monitor. Okay, so this is your monitor. Exactly what it says. It's going to show you exactly what's going on. QFAN CPU control. Again, we have it turned off because we have a pump on there, and this is uh, um, ASUS's QFAN controls. They are nice controls, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what we have here. So you have your options. You have PWM mode, DC mode, QFAN 2 source. What is it? Is it a motherboard one? Is it a CPU? So we can go in here and we can set it up to however we want. What do we want? Silent turbo manual, anti-surge support. That's going to enable that to prevent over voltage or under voltage for the, uh, the actual uh, fan. So 
again, it's a nice setup. We'll go ahead and turn that off. And now we'll take a look at our boot options. Fast boot enabled, that's just going to get you through. You're not going to see everything that pops up. SATA support, you know, is it all devices, hard drive only, boot devices only, <coughs> partial initialization. The difference here is with full initialization, um, it's saying that with partial initialization, when you disable this, USB is not going to be available until you boot up. Uh, partial initialization is going to give you an option for keyboards, mice, things like that. Full is going to basically boot up any USB device that's put in there. All right. Um, nice feature, kind of gets you through your, your boot up a little quicker. Uh, PS2 mouse and keyboard support. Uh, that's great for if you're overclocking because sometimes you want to turn off USB ports when you're overclocking. Next boot after power loss. Do you want it fast boot, normal boot, logo display, auto full screen off, post delay time, three seconds, num lock again, you know, a lot of the normal ones. Um, setup mode, advanced mode, this is where you can tell it how do you want to boot up. If you kick into the BIOS, what do you want it to look at? Compatibility support mode, launch CSM, boot device control. This is a great, you can actually boot from PCIe expansion devices. So awesome options there. And one of the things we want to talk about, secure boot. So we get in here, you notice that there's no option to really disable secure boot it's on the only thing you can do is change the OS type if you change it to other OS it will allow you to boot up from another OS um, our concerns with this being always on and not really having a way of turning it off through this is that if you were to use something like a Cronus or Ghost it can interfere with those because they're not on the secure boot key list they'll come up and say I can't boot from this operating system so if you were trying to let's say migrate your operating system from a smaller drive to a bigger drive using one of those applications. This right here can prevent that from happening. So anyway, the uh, but however, let's go back here. One of the things that it does that you ha do have is if you select other OS, it can, it can function and work, sort of work around the secure uh, boot state. You have key management here. If you want to change or load keys, uh, there's no real reason why you would be in here um, unless you wanted to try and load keys for an OS that might not be listed on the, the, you know, in Microsoft's setup. But you really don't want to mess around with that. You can screw things up. All right. Again, Easy Flash 2 utility setup animator. You can enable it or disable it. That's, that's the little, you know, the, the clocks and the wheels, things like that. Um, overclocking, you can set up your profiles. Very simple. And of course, your SPD information to show you what's going on with your memory and the two slots that are available on the board. Pretty straightforward. And then, of course, exit. Exit's going to give you your options to just, you know, boot back into Windows, restore, reset. So when you click on exit, there's your options. Load, optimize, default, save changes, discard, launch EFI shell from a USB drive. So there you have ASUS's uh, UEFI BIOS utility on the Z97i Plus motherboard. As always, if you like this video, be sure to give the like button a click. Uh, make sure you share it with your friends and be sure to subscribe to us so you can stay up to date with the latest news and reviews we have for you. Thank you.